Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. New York City is rich in colleges and universities, with big names like Columbia University, Barnard, NYU, and Fordham, and with the teeming campuses of the City University. But there are plenty of smaller and more hidden gems in the city's higher education showcase, where students can get a good education, enjoy the advantages of being part of a smaller community, and still have access to the huge cultural life of the city. Dr. Carrie Walk is the fairly new president of Marymount Manhattan College. Located in Manhattan's Upper East Side, it offers a wide variety of majors and a special haven for students who are interested in the arts. And today, she will tell us all about the college's mission and its programs. Welcome. Thank you, Cheryl. As I said, you know, there, there are scores, probably hundreds, of higher education institutions in New York, New York City. Some are household names. I suspect there are a lot of New Yorkers who aren't familiar with Marymount Manhattan College. So why don't you tell us something about its history? Oh, I'd love to do that. Um, Marymount Manhattan was founded in 1936. It was originally a branch campus of Marymount College in Terrytown, uh, New York. Uh, and that college has closed since then. But Marymount Manhattan persists. It became independent in 1961 uh, and co-ed and non-sectarian in 1971. And I think that's a very interesting moment in its history because it is now the only small liberal arts college in Manhattan that is both co-ed and non-sectarian. Uh, so it occupies a very uh, unique place in the in the higher education landscape of the city. It does. Um, why do you know why it made the decision to uh, has it been around for was a women's college for a long time? Why it made the decision to go co-ed and why it uh, cut its ties with the Catholic Church? Sure. Uh, around 1971, as you probably know, many women's colleges decided to go co-ed for a variety of reasons. And I think uh, in the case of Marymount Manhattan, it was, it was partly a decision about enrollment uh, and partly a decision about diversity. Uh, the college has always been committed to educating a diverse student body. Uh, and having men as part of, uh, of the student population, I think, was part of that diversity. Uh, and the college is currently, what is about 75% female, about 25% male? Absolutely. And the student body, about 1,700 students right now. Uh, and it's a pretty interesting demographic, as you said, uh, primarily women. Uh, about a third of our students uh, are underrepresented minorities. About 25% are from low-income families. <clears throat> about 5% are international students. Uh, okay. Probably about 60% now are, uh, are commuters, uh, up from 0%. Uh, okay. <laughs> How many are commuters? Or, or, or sorry, uh, about 60% are commuters, about 40% live in housing, uh, which is uh, an evolution over time for the okay. college. Okay. That gender breakdown, the 75, 25%, is that, it seems to be that's becoming more and more typical of colleges. I mean, a lot of colleges have a lot have majority of women yes. are a lot more women than men. Yes. Uh, right now, the high school demographic is shrinking. Uh, so that's one interesting fact ab about the pipeline into higher education. Fewer, fewer students coming out of high school? Fewer students. And more of the students who, who are college bound are women. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it's an interesting moment in our history as a nation. OK. Uh, most of Marymount Manhattan's uh, previous presidents were nuns, That's and I think right. one was a man. Yes. Are you the first female president who's not a nun? <laughs> uh, I am not. Regina Perucci okay. uh, is the first female president uh, who was not a nun. Uh, she uh, was number six. Uh, Judson Shaver, number seven. I am number eight. Okay. Uh, but I, I am the first uh, who is not Catholic, uh, so I represent... I think the the diversity of uh, of faith and outlook. Okay, okay. Um, now your tuition room and board comes to about if for tuition room and board comes to about forty two thousand dollars a year, significantly more, might I say, than the tuition room and board at the CUNY the CUNY campuses. That's so right. I would I would suspect that your students overall are in a somewhat higher economic bracket, say, than CUNY students. Would that be probably you know, I don't accurate? Know, I don't know the comparison to CUNY students, uh, but it is true that as a private independent college, our overall price point is higher than the public's. At the same time, 
Marymount Manhattan, vis-a-vis -vis the private independent colleges, has a very low price point. Uh, in, in terms of the kind of debt that students carry after college, it's literally on the national average. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that for a college that's in the middle of the most vibrant uh, city in the world, uh, we provide truly a, a, a value-based education. How many of your students are on financial aid, and do you know how many hold jobs? Yeah, uh, over 60% are on financial aid. Uh, and uh, the great majority hold jobs, uh, many of them jobs in the fields uh, that they studied at the college. It's one of the unique factors of the college is that it's very professionally oriented. In fact, like many liberal arts colleges, part of the mission uh, is to promote students' intellectual achievement and their personal growth. Uh, but a third component of our mission is professional preparation, and career development. Uh, so it's a, a, di a differentiating factor for us. And you do have a, you know, while you have, you know, many liberal arts courses, I was looking at a wide variety of liberal arts. No math major, though. That's interesting. No math major anymore. That's right. Yeah, the college, like a lot of the Marymounts, has focused on literature and the arts. For us right now, about 40% of our students are in theater and dance. Right. Of course, that includes performance, but also all of the backstage work, technical production, directing, writing. Uh, so that's about 50%. And then the other 50% are distributed across a really interesting set of majors, 28 more majors and 40 minors. So those include some of the traditional liberal arts and sciences, such as English and world literatures. I am an English major, for example. Uh, but it also includes uh, many business majors, communication and media arts majors, uh, and some uh, non-traditional liberal arts majors like speech language, audiology, and pathology. Uh, so in that major, these graduates are going on uh, to work with uh, children uh, with, with various kinds of speech uh, impairments and perhaps adults uh, who have, are stroke victims and need to work on, uh, on their speech. Uh, so we have those kinds of majors that are, are going directly into uh, the, the city's industries. It is a very interesting uh, mix of liberal arts and uh, vocation, you know, oriented yes. um, uh, kinds of majors. Uh, let's talk about the the, um, the people, the dance and theater yes. uh, students in particular. Um, and you said what about fifty? Is it about fifty percent? Okay, okay. Why? How? And how did that emphasis get developed? Why that? Well, you know, I think it was always there, but we have some wonderful visionary leaders uh, in theater and dance who have, uh, who have poured their, their passion into those areas and they've been able to tap into their giant networks in New York. And of course, uh, theater and dance students all around the world want to come to New York. Uh, in addition to theater and dance, we have a very robust minor in, uh, in musical theater. Uh, in fact, one of our best known alumni is Anna Lee Ashford, who won a Tony Award uh, for her role in You Can't Take It With You. And she's starring right now in Sylvia on Broadway. Mm -hmm. uh, so she's, she, you know, I think has achieved uh, a special level of recognition, uh, but many of our alums are, are going into these fields. And uh, it's really through the just high quality education provided uh, and the wonderful uh, opportunities that these students have to go out and meet people who are active in the industry. And I, I, are your performing arts programs linked to any of the professional theater and dance companies in the city? Are there links there? There are some links. For example, our dance students uh, go uh, and practice at the Martha Graham studio, for example. So there are those kinds of informal links. Uh, and we also bring in choreographers and, uh, and directors who work with students and they put on shows. In fact, uh, I was at a a show just yesterday, a dance performance uh, with four extraordinary pieces, and two of those was, were choreographed by our faculty members and two by outside choreographers uh, who are very well known. Uh, so our students have those kinds of mm -hmm. uh, professional opportunities. And, and that's true, I would say, across the board. Uh, just let me give you a, an example from a, a different place. Uh, in, our, in our art history classes, as you might imagine, Students are traveling all over the city, enjoying experiential learning opportunities, going to the Met, the Frick, uh, the Guggenheim, all the galleries, MoMA, the Whitney. 
uh, able to meet with curators uh, and with various people who have expertise in art and culture. Uh, so for them to be able to have these kinds of interactions with the professionals in the field, I think is what makes uh, an education in New York distinctive, mm -hmm. but certainly at a place like Marymount Manhattan, which is so small, there just aren't that many students. And so there are, are uh, in, in effect, more opportunities for them because they have these personal relationships with faculty members who are able to make that connection. And it probably is, a, uh, you know, when I think about it, is a smart marketing strategy, you know, to be um, a college in New York City where a lot of people want to come and be dancers and be <laughs> uh, in the theater. I mean, to have those programs to, you know, right. to lure them to Marymount Manhattan. Um, what are, the, what, what are some of the most popular majors after theater and dance? The uh, communication and media arts majors are very popular. In fact, uh, we had a kind of undifferentiated major, the communications major, but now we've differentiated into a set of majors that we're very excited about, uh, including digital journalism, uh, digital media and video production, uh, cinema and television uh, and media. Uh, and we're very excited about those because uh, they really speak to now. Uh, they, they speak to your profession, for example. Uh, looking around, I feel as if I could be, in fact, at Marymount Manhattan because we've just opened a new digital media production studio uh, with, uh, with state-of-the-art equipment, uh, everything that students need in order to uh, become adept in this wonderful field that's evolving so quickly and that has so many opportunities for them and for them to be able to connect again with the city uh, and be able to get into that talent pipeline uh, and into uh, a workforce that is hungry for them. So it's the idea to prepare them for careers in journalism, which would include television, uh, perhaps creating videos for the Internet, uh, movies even? I don't know if that's movies part of even. it. Absolutely. In fact, about two weeks ago, I went out to Los Angeles to meet with some of our alumni there. Uh, we had a must have been 40, 50 students, alums, who, uh, who came to a reception that we had, and they were all in television and film uh, in different kinds of roles. And I think that's so interesting because we're known for theater, uh, but students are making the move from theater to television and film, and they're using uh, the background they're being given in communication and media arts to expand out uh, so that they have so many job opportunities available to them. Uh, and let me just say at this moment, you mentioned uh, that we do have a professional focus, absolutely true. But I think one of the reasons that students and their families are so interested in a college like Marymount Manhattan is that all of these majors, no matter what they are, are embedded in the liberal arts. Uh, so that students are getting a broad education that helps them think, that helps them become lifelong learners, uh, that helps them in the memorable words of Drew Faust, the president of Harvard, to prepare not only for their first job, but for their sixth job, their eighth job. Uh, the generation coming up right now, they will, they will be in multiple professions by the ends of their lives. They will live in multiple countries. So for us, teaching them in what will probably become the first 20 to 25 percent of their lives, to be able to prepare them for this lifetime of working, living, and learning is what we're really about. I just want to note, since we're talking about uh, majors, that until 1972, you still offered a major in home economics, <laughs> but that went out the window in, back in the 70s. Well, <laughs> well, you know, it's so funny. I've got to tell you something funny. I was meeting with alums from the 50s, and they had taken communication. And I was very interested because we offer communication and media arts. But it turned out that their communication was in really in, in elocution. Many of them were preparing to become teachers and they had to take a state exam that had an oral component and they were trying to shed their New York accents. Mm -hmm. uh, so indeed, uh, life has changed at small colleges over the many decades. That's funny. We're gonna take a short break, then we'll be back with more with Dr. Kerry Walk, president of Marymount Manhattan College after this message. Welcome back. I'm Cheryl McCarthy, and I'm talking with Dr. Carrie Walk, president of Marymount Manhattan College. You have an international studies program. What's, what's its mission? 
Its mission is to give students experience thinking about global issues. Uh, they are able to explore different cu countries, different economies, different national histories. Uh, I would, you know, it's interesting to me that across the board at Marymount Manhattan, there's a lot of in interest, even in other majors in international studies. So, for example, we have, as part of our business major, a concentration in international business. Uh, our English major is an English major, but it's English and world literatures. Uh, so, throughout the college, uh, there's a an interest in international issues and perspectives. Uh, and I think that that's appropriate for so many reasons. One is that we want to educate students who are uh, informed citizens of our country, but also citizens of the world. I think it's also important because we're in New York, one of the global capitals of the world, uh, and a more international city it would be difficult to find. Do a lot of your students do uh, some, a part of their four years abroad? Beg pardon? Yes, they do. Uh, a fair number of them do, although I will say that not as many as you'd think, and one reason is that they come to a college like this, uh, which is not a typical collegiate experience. For example, we don't have athletics. Uh, we don't have sororities and fraternities. We don't have a lot of the identifiably collegiate experiences uh, that one would have or that one thinks about in going to college. But what we do have is this extraordinary city. And once students are here, they want to stay here. Right. It's partly for those internship opportunities right. and to be in the city. Right. The competition for students has been fierce in the last 10 years or so. I may be slacking off somewhat now, or I don't know, that may be true. How do you recruit students and how do you, what's your pitch? <laughs> well, one thing to say is that, as I mentioned, the high school demographic is shrinking and it's going to be flat probably for uh, the next eight or 10 years. Uh, so that's uh, significant for us to understand. Uh, and I think that to some extent the national... In other words, not as many yeah, not as high many school students. students coming out as there were, say, in 2000. That's right. Yeah. And colleges have many more competitors. Uh, we have seen the rise of the for-profit college and university across the country. Many fewer of those uh, are operating in New York State because of various kinds of state regulations. Uh, but the point is simply that college-bound students have a lot of competition. And what's happened as a result is that colleges and universities of all kinds have uh, delved more deeply into marketing than they ever have before. Uh, for a small college uh, like Marymount Manhattan that's embedded in New York City, in a certain way, the pitch is easy. Uh, but I think that in addition, as we've talked about, we have a highly creative student body. And those students who are not majoring in creative fields are partly at Marymount Manhattan because of the overall creative environment. Just to give you one example, uh, our students in business can major in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is all about being creative, about thinking beyond what's possible. Uh, and you know, we see that also in our science programs where many students are partnering with their professors to do undergraduate research and then publishing that research in some of the best regarded journals uh, in the sciences. Uh, so I think the creativity is a big draw for our students. Also small class size, uh, two thirds of our classes are under 20 students great student-faculty ratio of 11 to 1, uh, and just a, a very warm, collegial, welcoming community. Our students talk about that a lot, the, the sense that they have that, that they have a home in this giant city. Mm -hmm. And they also have a literal home because you have two dormitories, right? We, we do indeed. Uh, we have a residence hall on 55th Street. It is uh, the tallest residence hall in the country. Uh, we just opened the doors to a new residence hall in Cooper Square. It's uh, 12 stories uh, and can house about 270 students. So all, all told, uh, we are uh, housing around 800 students. Okay. You offer a degree program at the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility, which is, I think is the only state-run prison for women. How does that work? Yes, I just visited uh, the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women a few weeks ago. 
Beginning in 1996, the college decided to offer college programs at Bedford Hills, associate's degrees in social sciences and uh, a bachelor's degree in sociology. Our faculty go to Bedford Hills, uh, where we have hired someone to direct that program and, and a second person to coordinate it. The faculty go there to teach. Uh, we do some inside-out classes where our students from the main campus go to Bedford Hills and they take classes with uh, the students there. And over these years, uh, we have graduated several hundred students uh, from Bedford Hills. For us, this is part of our founding mission. Uh, it's a, a very important program, and uh, it's one that matters to us as a college, and it's one I think that matters very much to us as a society. Students who have gone through our program when they are released, uh, they're not reincarcerated. The recidivism rate is reduced practically to zero. Uh, and as you may know, uh, the cost of educating an inmate is far lower uh, than the cost of reincarcerating an inmate. Uh, so for so many reasons, educational, social, and economic, this is an important program. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'll just add, having just been there and met these, uh, these students, they are very, very focused. They're very serious about their studies. They get down to work. And so many of them are mothers. Uh, and one of the reasons that they're interested in becoming educated persons is so that they can work with their, with their kids and to inspire their children to stay in school uh, and graduate from high school and from college. As I recall, maybe about 15 years ago, the federal government, and I think the state of New York, withdrew their funding for college programs for prison inmates. Um, and it, so I, I don't think there are any federal, any federal or even New York State funding for, for these programs now. So Marymount really sort of stepped into the breach. That's right. That. There are about five institutions of higher learning that are offering college programs right now in the state of New York. Uh, the federal government, as you may know, is stepping in and piloting a new program. Really, it's a restoration of the old program uh, so that inmates can receive Pell Grants, uh, which are federal grants for uh, people from low-income families. Uh, is that something new? That, that's a pilot from the Obama administration. Okay. So okay. It's, it's new, but it's restoring something that used, uh, that right. used to be in place. At Marymount, uh, we ha our program is endowed. Uh, so that we'll be able to continue offering it in, in years to come. We also support it somewhat through our operating budget. Uh, and finally, we are uh, applying to be eligible uh, to get these Pell Grants to our students. Now, your educational background uh, and your work has focused a lot on writing. Yes. Um, how important are good writing skills for college students, and how would you assess the writing skills of today's college students? As you know, writing is thinking, and writing is an essential skill for success in the professions, I would say success in life, the ability to express oneself clearly, cogently, persuasively. This is something that we want all of our employees to be able to do. We want all of the our uh, people in civic life to be able to do. Uh, so I, I consider it to be certainly uh, a core skill and one that it takes a lifetime to develop. Uh, but there are a lot of complaints about college students' deficiencies right. in writing. And as somebody who has taught, who teaches writing courses, has taught them for a while, um, and, and, and I actually asked some of my students, well, what were you doing the 12, the, the 12 years of high school when your English teacher was trying to teach you grammar and right. sentence structure, or, <laughs> or, or is it just not being taught anymore? Right. You know, it's so funny, as a, as a teacher, 25 years in the classroom, I don't think about students in this way. I don't think about what their deficiencies are, uh, how their preparation is different or less adequate from the preparation of previous generations. I do try to teach students exactly where they are. And I will say one thing for today's students, they're interested in self-expression and they spend a lot of time writing, a lot of time expressing themselves. So whether they've been given 
appropriate grammar instruction or instruction in punctuation is less important to me than they, they are interested in the craft, that they see themselves as people who want to share their ideas. And with that essential motivation, I think that we can equip them in all of the other ways. Okay. Now you've got about a minute left to tell me your five-year plan for the college. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, you know, it's really building on what the college has been doing, and that is combining a fantastic, high-quality liberal arts education with professional preparation. I think that that is our, our differentiating factor. I think it's our real possibility today when our, our outcomes at colleges and universities across the country are measured to some extent on professional success. And I think Marymount Manhattan is beautifully positioned at this moment in history uh, because of the way we combine a general liberal arts education uh, with one that's pointed directly at the professions. Well, I think uh, our talk has been very uh, educational for those of us, uh, for those people out there who didn't know so much about Marymount Manhattan College. And uh, it sounds like a very interesting place, and I'm sure you're going to have an interesting time there. Uh, it's been fantastic. <laughs> You've only been there 100 days? A little over 100 days. A little over 100 days. days. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be there, and it's been a great pleasure having the chance to speak with you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Carrie Walk, for joining me today. If you'd like more information about Marymount Manhattan College, you can go to the website at mmm.edu. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. If there are any people you'd like to hear from or topics you'd like us to explore, please let us know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.